Hello, this is Philip Seagraves, and we are going today spend a little bit of time talking about a couple of forecasting techniques and some of the math that you'll want to use, and you should be able to calculate all this by hand, but we're going to use Excel just to make it easier to demonstrate. But all of these things should be easily done with pencil and paper. So we're going to start off with a brief discussion about seasonal indices in the context of data that has a trend. So we're going to have data that is trending upward. Sales are going up month by month. But we also have a seasonal pattern so that we have data that actually is exhibiting the same proportion of being up, down, or, or a, a definitely a directional proportion up and down for each of the, of the periods that we're going to be concerned with in seasonality. So let's take a look at those problems. The first one that we have, we're going to kind of look at these just as though they were some homework. And in this first example, we have a forecast for January 2010. This forecast has been provided to us, and the forecast was for 502 units. Now we know that this forecast was developed based on some uh, past data, and this could be data over the course of many, many years. And the forecast is based on a um, a bunch of, or a series of data that yielded the following regression formula. In this case, we have an intercept of 30.6 plus our slope is 20.8. So 30.6 plus 20.8x, now where this is where x is the time period, that's our trend line that was used to create our forecast of 502 units. So the question that we're presenting with here is, well, what was the seasonal index or the seasonal factor that was used for January? Now we assume that two years of historical data beginning in 2008 was used to create this forecast. Keep in mind that, that we could have used a different amount of data for calculating the seasonal index uh, and for calculating the forecast. In this case though, we, we have to assume to solve this problem that the two year or 24 periods were used to solve or used to create the regression or the formula for our forecast, for our unseasonalized forecast. And in that case, since we have 24 periods of data running January 2008 through December of 2009, we're going to be predicting the very next period, which is 2010. So January of 2010 would be the 25th period. So the first thing we need to do is calculate if there were no seasonality, what would our answer be just using our formula. So in this case with Excel, I'm just going to simply say 30.6 plus 20.8 times 25 which is the next period. We have 24 months and the very next one would be 25. In this case, this could have obviously been done very easily with a hand calculator. We come up with a value of 550.6. Now what is this? This is the number that has not been seasonalized. And if you recall from calculating a seasonal index, all we would do to calculate a seasonal index is multiply this value, which would either be the average of all our values, or in the case of a trend, the value predicted by the equation. And what we would do to calculate a seasonal index would be to multiply, the seasonal forecast would be to multiply this value by the seasonal index. Well, to come up with what the seasonal index would have been, in this case, we would just simply divide the forecast that's provided, the 502, by this 550. So in this case, I'll just say equals 502, and we'll divide that by this value over here, 550.6. So we end up with the answer to this problem is 0.911733. And if we round that, we're going to say 0.91. So the seasonal index for January is 0.91. Okay, pretty easy. Should be able to do that with pencil and paper, pretty darn easy. Now the next one is an exponential smoothing problem. In this case, we have a uh, forecast for period five that we're trying to get to. 
and we have an alpha of 0.4. Now the alpha is the extent to which we are going to take into account the actual sales into the model. There's several ways to solve, simply solve for exponential smoothing. The way I like to do it is to multiply alpha times the actual sales and multiply 1 minus alpha times the previous forecast to come up with my next forecast. So how would I do that? Very simply, in Excel I'm just going to say equals alpha, in this case is 0.4. I'm going to multiply that by the actual sales from last time, which in this case is 213, and I'm going to add that to 1 minus alpha, in this case is 0.6, times my last forecast. So we come up with a value of 217. Now that's my forecast for period 4. Now we would do the exact same thing the next time. So we would say equals, and I could just drag that formula down, but I'm going to do it here again just so that you understand that this would, obviously we can't drag down on a piece of paper, but we certainly can do the math again. So we're going to say 0.4 times our actual from period 4, we're going to add that to 0.6 times the forecast from the last time, and we'll hit enter. So now we end up with our sales, sales forecast, or our forecast for period 5, in this case is 228.32, or 228. All right, we're doing great so far. Let's move on down to Question number three, in this case, we have a series of quarterly data, and all we want to do is figure out what the seasonal index is for second quarter. So we have the first year, second year, third year over here. We have our quarters in this area, and we have our sales figures here. Well, to calculate a seasonal index, what we're trying to figure out is to what extent do quarters typically vary from normal sales. Well, what are normal sales for a quarter? Well, we know that's just going to be the average of all these data here, all this data here. So, what we would do is we would just add all these up. So, we'll say, we'll do this quickly in Excel, but you could certainly do this by hand. We're going to sum up, and I could use the average function in Excel as well, but we'll do this a little bit closer to the way you would do it by hand. We're going to add those up and divide those by, we're going to count all these up. So I'm going to use the Excel function here, just so you can learn a little bit more about how these are done. I'm going to highlight all these, and I'm going to hit enter. So what we come up with here is 58.4375. All right, so right now we know what our average sales are for a month, and I can confirm that by double-clicking it. We can see the range that it's highlighting. And what we want to do now is figure out, well, all right, how much do the sales for each of these quarters vary from the average? And then we can average those. There's two ways to do that. I'll show you both ways. First thing we'll do is we're going to take the sales and divide it by this average. I'm going to hit F4 there so I can copy that in Excel, but it's going to be the same thing. And we're going to take that same formula. And we're going to, again, it was sales divided by the average. Do that for second quarter there. I'm going to paste it here for second quarter there. I'm going to paste it here for the second quarter there. I'm going to paste it there. And so you can see, I could have easily calculated this by hand, but I have 77.718, 0 0.83, 0 0.70. And I can just average these numbers pretty quickly in Excel by simply highlighting those and pressing enter, and I get a value of 0.757219. So my seasonal index for the second quarter is 0.757219, or 